So the first thing I'll do here is create my background shapes. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool again, and this time I'm going to start from the bleed. So top left corner, click and drag until my cursor snaps to the bottom right corner. And now what I'll do is create my gradient for my background color. So over here, I have my gradient panel open and I also have my swatches panel open. So first, what I'm going to do is apply my gradient by just clicking on the gradient thumbnail here. And then what you'll see are two color stops in your gradient panel. So two color stops will always come with a midpoint. And this is basically where these two colors begin to blend in with one another. So you can always move this midpoint at any given point within that slider. So if you wanted more white, you would drag it to the right. If you wanted more black in the gradient, you could drag it to the left. You can also change the direction or invert them from here, or you can change the angle. You also have a radial gradient as well, and you have a freeform gradient also. Gradients are pretty simple to add. We could just click and drag any color from our swatch panel or over in our toolbox right on top of these color stops. So what I'm gonna do is actually drag this magenta color right over top of one of my color stops here. And what you could also do is double click on a color stop and change its color. So I'm gonna double click on that color stop. It's gonna open up my color options. In this flyout menu, I'm gonna change that to CMYK. And what I'm gonna do is add 100 magenta and 100 yellow and zero black. And that's gonna just give me like a brighter version of red right there. So now what I wanna do is change the direction of my gradient. So I'm just gonna click off of that. Now I could change the direction here as well by either choosing 90 degrees and seeing how it moves this way. And if I want it the opposite, I could choose negative 90 degrees and it puts it this way. Another way that you can actually change your gradient is by selecting your gradient tool. And when you have a shape selected with a gradient applied to it, it gives you this gradient annotator tool which is basically a replication of your slider. So here you'll see your two color stops and your midpoint. So what I can do is move my midpoint down and adjust how much red I want versus how much of the magenta I want. I can also rotate it from any of these ends here and I can make it longer or shorter. But if I move off of it, I can always just drag and freeform draw my gradient as well. So I can make it go in any direction that I want it to. So for this example, I'm just gonna keep it vertical and I'm gonna have this much red versus this much magenta. So I'm gonna grab my selection tool and just select off of that. And next what I'm gonna do is grab my type tool and I'm just gonna use point text. So what that means is I'm just gonna click once. I'm gonna change my font. So in my character panel at the top here, I'm gonna change this to Helvetica, and I'm gonna make it bold. So if you don't see your control panel up here, you can again go up to your window menu and choose control. Right now I'm also in Essentials Classic, which is my workspace, so you can switch from that if you are using your Essentials workspace. Also, I'm going to increase my font size so I'm gonna make this fairly large. So what I could do is maybe make this, I don't know, maybe 200 points for now. And what I'll do is type out the word graphic, but I'm gonna put a couple letters on each line. So I'm gonna put GRA on one line, hit return, put PH on another, and then IC on the last line. And then I'll just hit the escape key to make my text tool jump out of my type mode. The next thing I could do is maybe align this to the right. So at the top in my control panel, I also have a link to my paragraph panel. Also, if you don't see that, you can go to your window menu and go down to where you see type, and then you can choose paragraph. So I'm just gonna click on the link here, 
and I'm just going to right align that text and I'll just position it over top here. And now if I want to adjust the letting or the line height, I can do that through my character panel. So I can adjust the line height this way. Or a shortcut key would be to hold down the option or alt key and the up or down arrow. So I can put this down and I'll use my grids also just to align my text. So maybe I'll kind of space these out a bit. So next what I'm going to do is apply a gradient to my text. But the thing is I have to actually create my gradient first and save it. And then I have to add a fill color to my text using my appearance panel and then apply the gradient to it. So first what I'm going to do is choose a couple colors here from my default swatches and add them to my gradient. So for me, I'm going to just add a couple simple colors here, which is lime green. I'm just going to drag that over top. So you can actually replace your color stops by just dragging any color right on top of it. And I'm also going to choose this blue right here and also drag it right on top of the red swatch. So now you'll see my text is still black while it's selected. So it's not applying the gradient. So what I have to do is actually save this gradient. So I can go to the gradient panel right next to this gradient thumbnail. I can click on the drop down arrow and I can click on that little save disk at the bottom. And now that will save my gradient to my swatch panel. So now what I can do is go over to my appearance panel. I'm going to click on add new fill and that adds a fill color on top of my type. I'm going to click that drop down and select the gradient that I just made. And now it applies the gradient to my text. So now what I can do is also change the direction of my gradient. So again, I can grab my gradient annotator tool from the toolbox. And now I can just click and drag in any direction. So if I wanted the green at the top and the blue at the bottom, I can start from the top down. If I want to do it from the bottom up, I could do that as well. So I have blue at the top and then green near the bottom. And again, I can adjust my midpoint. So from this point, I can actually just adjust my layout here. So maybe I want this to touch right at the top of my artboard and then maybe right to the edge here. And next what I'll do is again, grab my type tool. I'm just going to click. I'll change my font size to about 18 points. I'll change my color swatch to white and I'll make this Helvetica regular or Helvetica light, whichever one you prefer. And now what I'll do is type in swatches and gradients with Adobe Illustrator. And again, I just have to correct my letting. So again, I can go up to my character panel at the top. And because I have 18 points, maybe I'll just make my letting 21. And then I can go to my paragraph and just align that to the left. So here I can actually just place this anywhere that I want to within my grid. I can place it here or in the center or maybe down at the bottom. Or I can maybe just do something interesting and flip it on its side and then have it within the same sort of like quadrant here, maybe aligning it right to the pH. And then lastly, I'll just grab my type tool again and I'll finish off the phrase graphic design by just clicking once again, typing the word design. I'll just hit escape to jump out of that. And I'll make this font size maybe 36 points. I'll make it bold and make the color black. And again, I can adjust this and line it up somewhere in here, just optically. And then to hide my guides, I can hold command or control semicolon just to kind of see what that looks like. I can maybe select all, hold shift and deselect my background and just kind of like move this over until the edge of the type just goes to the edge of my artboard. So lastly, what I can do is select all of these. I'll then group them together by holding down Command G or going to the object menu and selecting group. 
And then now I have my first example all saved within this layer using gradients and swatches. Before I move on, I'm going to save my file. So I'll go up to my file menu, go to save as, and for this, I'm just going to save it to my desktop. I've already created a folder called Swiss type design effects. So right in here, I'll just save my illustrator file and just click save. I'll make it have PDF compatibility and just click okay.